video over a dream and the understanding to it. Okay, I'm going to tell the dream. In this dream, I seen Jesus descend down to the bottom of hell. In the bottom of hell was a pool of water. And I know in hell there's no water, but this was representative of the last baptism that Jesus went through. Jesus went down and, and lowered into the, the pool of water. And it was just enough for a man to fit in. Uh, Jesus at this point did have, he had no strength left. And there were three to four, maybe more angels round about it. With the last of anything that he had left, he reached up one of his arms. And an angel reached down and grabbed him. And pulled him up out of it. And then he started to ascend. What was told me is, in this dream was it was like it was saying the dream or the lord was saying to me in the dream joseph for you to enter into the first resurrection you have to come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ and uh, then i seen myself running and jumping over fences and as i kept running from one fence there'd be a dog in it and then i'd get past it by getting over the fence and then past another fence past another dog and so on until finally i made it past all the dogs and i was running down this path and uh, that was the end of the dream. Okay, let's add some more understanding to this. John twelve twenty five. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Okay, Jesus is the resurrection. Let's go over here. I'm supposed to read to you Revelations 24. I'm going to sit this down for a second. Okay, 24 says, um, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Um, that's 20 verse 4. Here's the rest. 25. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Why? Because they overcame the first death. Remember, the last enemy that we defeat is death. If we defeat the first death, there's no need for the second death. Because we've defeated the first one. Uh, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Hence reigning is being a king, so priests and kings, and that's what it says at the beginning of Revelations. But you see, it's those who enter into the first resurrection. See, those who don't enter into the first resurrection, um, there's a chance that the second death has power over them. Because the ones who enter into the first resurrection, they have nothing to worry about. They overcame the first death. And they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead don't live again. They stay in the grave until the white throne judgment. Now I want to say this. If Jesus is the first resurrection, then to enter into the first resurrection... You have to come to the measure of the stature of who Jesus is. You have to come to the measure of the stature of who Christ is. If he is the resurrection, you have to become just like him. You have to become perfect just like him. You have to go through the baptisms that he went through. You want me to prove it? Here it says, Ephesians 4.12. Uh, before this, it talks about the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And they're given 4.12 for, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ here we go till we all 
come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to the knowledge that Jesus had, to the full knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. See that? Perfect man. Until we become into a perfect man and to the full knowledge of the Son of God, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We all have to come to that level to enter into the resurrection. Because if Jesus is the resurrection, his stature of who he was, the knowledge of what he had in God, he was perfected. And he was of the fullness of God. If he is the resurrection, we also have to become just like him. We have to come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ to enter into the first resurrection. Let me take you even further. Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles, that's the beginning teachings, of the doctrine of Christ. And it doesn't mean leaving, it means going past. The doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Not laying that again to where we're not repenting from dead works and of faith toward God. We're no longer doing that. We're no longer going back to the foundation of repentance. We're leaving the principles. We're going on into perfection. And here's the furtherance of it. Of the doctrine of baptisms. Plural. It's not water baptisms. It's spiritual baptisms we go through. We're learning that doctrine of baptisms as we go through the baptisms. That way we can teach others. And when you go through a baptism, you're dying to yourself. Like Paul said, I die daily. And to enter into that resurrection, you're going to go through many deaths and greater deaths and then greater deaths until finally you're getting to that uh, burning fire that's uh, cleansing you from all unrighteousness when you're entering into them last baptisms and it's burning out all sin. And of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead. Not only will we be raising the dead, we will be raised from the dead. And of eternal judgment. We'll enter into eternal judgment too. And this connects us with what I just read up here, 24. And I saw thrones, and judgment was given unto them. They entered into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit cleansing ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness holiness is above righteousness you go from righteousness to holiness but we're perfecting that last state of holiness perfecting holiness in the fear of God yes we fear God we don't just reverence him God can kill you know that for a surety Hebrews 4.1, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Do you hear that? There's a, a promise being left you of entering into his rest. The rest is that resurrection. Uh, let, and, and also, too, uh, in Revelations 14.13, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let us, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. See, these people who are teaching grace and not of works, they're, uh, they're wrong because what they don't understand is that works were the works of the law Paul was talking about. There is a works of the Spirit. Because faith without works is dead. There's no such thing as faith without works. Sorry. But you're teaching false doctrines, whoever you are that are teaching this. All the verses of, of the Word of God point in the same direction and they agree with one another. If faith without works is dead and we do labor to enter into that rest, it's just not we don't go by our own works. We don't go by the works of the law, but the works of the Spirit. So we have to learn the works of the Spirit. We have to under, uh, become an, an, an obedience unto God and let His Spirit move through us. In Matthew 5, 5, 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. 
And some people say, well, in the Greek, perfect means mature. Well, it still, it would still mean the same thing because if you be ye therefore mature, even as your Father which is in heaven is mature, because I've looked it up in the Greek, and both of them per words, perfect, mean if they meant mature, then you're still equal with God, which is still perfection. So you're not getting past that one. James 2.20, faith without works is dead. And it says it in 2.26 as well. Just want to leave you with that. God bless.